So the next topic is section 2 of module 2 of basic electronics that is which deals with data representation, data types, data storage, microcontroller system and section 3 deals with half adder and full adder, multiplexer and decoder. Okay. So to begin with what is meant by data representation. So uh, we know that the digital systems represent the data in terms of zeros and ones, right? The data are represented in terms of zeros and ones, okay? Zero and one bits. So in a digital system, data is represented using zero and one bits, okay? Two digits. So the group of four bits is known as, in general it is known as nibble, okay? Group of four bits is known as nibble. Similarly, group of eight bits is known as byte. These are some of the important points in this data representation section. Okay, so normally when you transmit the data, all the data, if we send an email or uh, through the computer whatever data we are sending it is sent in terms of zeros and ones means it is sent in um, group of bits right so they I can tell that the information is always sent in terms of or represented stored and transmitted in terms of group of bits okay this group of bits is called as binary code okay binary code so we know that the computer system processes the binary data okay but uh, when the data zeros and ones is transmitted in group of bits say for example 0 1 0 1 1 0 0 0 1 1 0 it's a group of bits right it is always desirable to convert this uh, group of bits into uh, into some form of shortcuts okay so what the information given by the users may be in the form of some other number system, okay, in order for easy transmission. Uh, say for example, the other form may be decimal number system or it may be octal, etc. Okay, so the information given by the user may be in the form of other uh, number system. So the system operation must have the capability so system operation must have the capability to convert the numbers from one number system to the another number system okay so from uh, decimal to binary because the computer processes only zeros and ones right so there are in general the number system can be classified into number system it's mainly they are classified into 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 types of popularly used number system. So the 4 types of popularly used number system are 1 is your binary, right? So total 2 digits, right? So base is equal to 2. Now decimal. Decimal number system. So in the case of decimal number system, the total number of uh, digits or the base is equal to 10. Okay? Now, next one is your hexadecimal. So, in the case, so in the case of hexadecimal system, total uh, numbers used is equal to 16. So, base is equal to 16. The last one is your octal number system. So, in the case of octal number system, base is equal to 8. These are some of the important number systems uh, used by the users to provide the information in an easier method. For example, in order to uh, uh, give a phone number like in terms of 0101100 the address we may give it in terms of other uh, representation uh, hexadecimal so it is uh, enough to represent in short digits okay so let me make a table so this will be your table of the different systems so decimal Next one is the equivalent binary and your hexadecimal. 
so your decimal number system since we uh, our childhood we are using it 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 okay so the decimal equivalent since it is hexadecimal 16 let me give the equivalent till 16 okay 10 11 12 13 14 15 so 0 to 15 what, it, what is the binary equivalent? 0, 0, 0, 0. The binary equivalent of 0 is 0, 0, 0, 0. What is the binary equivalent of 1? You just keep adding 1 to it. Okay? 1 to uh, 0, 0, 0, 0. You add a 1. So, you will be getting 0, 0, 0, 1. So, let me finish it and I will tell you how to do it. 0, 0, 1, 0. 0, 0, 1, 1. 4 equivalent is 0, 1, 0, 0. 5 is 0, 1, 0, 1. 6 equivalent is 0, 1, 1, 0. 7 is 0, 1, 1, 1. Now 8 is 1, 0, 0, 0. 1, 0, 0, 1. 1, 0, 1, 0. 11 is 1, 0, 1, 1. 12 is 1, 1, 0, 0. 13 is 1, 1, 0, 1. 14 is 1, 1, 1, 0. And 15 is 1, 1, 1, 1. So, what will be your uh, hexadecimal equivalent? So, it is going to be same as that of your decimal till 0 to 9. Okay. So, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay. After 9, you are going to use alphabets. A to F. A, B, C, D, E, F. So, these are the normal, uh, means the frequently used number systems for your reference. Okay. So, in order to differentiate decimal and hexadecimal number, you can just, for example, if I want to, uh, if uh, 64 is the number. So, how will you differentiate it, whether it's a decimal or hexadecimal number? So, if it's an hexadecimal number, you add a... Uh, dollar symbol to the beginning of the number or you can add capital H to the now for example 75 H to the end of the number okay so this will indicate that it is an hexadecimal number okay so now you are going to study the two conversions now if we want to convert how will you convert hexadecimal to binary and second one is binary to hexadecimal so it's very simple so for example now you if you have to convert a3 hexadecimal to binary to binary so how will you convert this just write the equivalent binary digit so what is your equivalent digit for 3 and a3 is equal to what is your equivalent binary for 3 value is 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, right? So, for A, what is your equivalent 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. So, this is going to be your equivalent hexadecimal. Now, if you want to convert the binary number, so let me uh, take a binary number, second one, binary to hexadecimal. So, if I want to convert 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. So, if I want to convert this to hexadecimal group into 4, so this will be your 4, this will be your 4, right? 1, 0, 0, 0. What is your uh, uh, binary equivalent, hexadecimal equivalent of this binary number? 1, 0, it will be equal to 8, right? 8. Now 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, it is equivalent to hexadecimal E. So your hexadecimal value will be equal to E8, okay, to the base 16. So this is how you convert hexadecimal to binary and binary to hexadecimal, okay. The next topic which is going to be covered is your data types, okay. So the major data types are, so if we can make a table, data types okay number of bits and 
the range of values. There are mainly four main types of data. Okay. So one first one is called as your unsigned byte. Second one is called as signed byte. That is which has both positive as well as negative. Okay. Next one is unsigned word and signed words. So what will be the number of bits? Unsigned byte 8. 8 bits is 1 byte, right? Similarly, signed byte you will be having number of bits will be 8. Whereas in the case of unsigned word it will be 16 and signed word also it will be 16. Now what is the range of your unsigned byte? Unsigned byte the range will be uh, ranging from 0 to 2 power n. So it is 0 to 2 power n minus 1. So 2 power n is 2 power 8 which is 256 minus 1 is 255. So it is 0 to 255. Second one signed byte. So what now what, what is meant by a signed byte which consists of both your negative as well as positive value. Okay normally a signed byte is represented by 2's complement. Okay so for example num the negative 1 is represented by so uh, eight, uh, 8 bits right. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Now your, this is your LSB. Your most significant bit will be signifying your sign, whether it is positive or negative. 0 stands for positive and 1 stands for negative. So in this case, the, this MSB is positive, right? Uh, sorry, uh, 1, right? So 1 signifies a negative value. So this value will be equal to minus 1. Okay? So, in the case of signed byte, the MSB will signify your sign. If it is 0, it is positive. If the MSB is 1, it is negative. Okay. So, what is the range of the uh, signed byte? The range varies from minus 128 to 1 plus 127. So, how did you get this? The range is given by, let me give it by another character. So, the range is minus 2 power n minus 1 to plus 2 power n minus 1 minus 1. Okay. So, for example, 2 power n is what? 2 power uh, 8. 8 minus 1 is 2 power 7. So, minus 2 power 7. So, what is 2 power 7? Which is equal to 128. Therefore, 128 to 2 power n minus 1 minus 1. So, what is 2 power n minus 1? 128 minus 1 is 1 plus uh, 127. Okay. So, this is how you get the value. Now, unsigned word, it is again 16, uh, 16 bits. So, what will be the value? It will be 0 to 2 power 16 or 2 power n, right? So, what is the value? 0 to, what is 2 power 16? 2 power 16 which is equal to 65,536 right 2 power n minus 1 so 0 to 2 power uh, 536 so it will be 535 okay and last one is your signed word so what will be your range so this is your range so what will be your range in this case minus 2 power n minus 1 plus 2 power n minus 1 minus 1. So what will be your value? 2 power n minus 1. So it is 2 power 16 minus 1 which is 2 power 15. Minus 2 power 15 to minus 2 power 15 to plus 2 power 15 minus 1. So the range is given as minus 32,768 plus 32,767. So, these are the different ranges. Okay. So, let me check it once again. 2 power 15 is equal to 32,768. Correct. Minus 1 is 32, 
1767. So these are the different data types with their ranges. Okay. The next topic what you are going to study is called as your data storage. So the two major data storage devices are devices are one is your RAM and the other one is your ROM okay so read only memory and the second one is RAM random access memory okay random access memory okay So what is meant by read only memory? Read only memory consists of the program code and permanent data. Permanent data means it can also be called as non-volatile memory. So what is meant by non-volatile? So the data will not be, the data will not be lost will not be lost even if the power supply is switched off okay that is called as non-volatile memory okay so what uh, what is meant by random access memory the opposite to that of your uh, read only memory right it consists of it can also be called as a temporary storage device device or it stores the data for short time period okay it consists of the transient data, transient data and the variables used by the program. So it can also be called by another name volatile memory right or volatile storage device. Why? So once your power supply is switched on your data will be vanished right. Your data will be lost data will be lost one of the exception is that of your cmos ram exception cmos ram which consists of a battery backed storage okay backed storage okay so this uh, these are the important points and normally uh, the memory amount of storage uh, of the memory device is given in terms of KB kilobytes right so what is kilobytes as the name indicates we uh, we think that it is thousand so one kilobyte is equal to thousand twenty four bytes okay so it is not thousand it is thousand twenty four bytes because the nearest two power ten value is equal to thousand twenty four so the next topic is your microcontroller system. The microcontroller structure mainly consists of three main parts. Okay. So one is your memory. Second one is your CPU. And the third one is IO interface. Right. Or IO ports. The main structure is given by. So uh, you will be having a CPU. Central processing unit. Which will be connected to your memory. will be having a clock generally the clock is going to be a crystal oscillator okay it will be connected both the sides to the okay input port and the output port so this is going to be your input port and the output port so if I can write this as input port and this is your output port so the memory the microcontroller will be controlled by your control program okay so what is connected to your input port and what is connected to your output port the input port will be the sensors different types of sensors so what are the different types of sensors 
examples one is switches okay so you will be having switches or it can be different sensors or keypads okay Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so all this will be connected to your input port, and your output will be displayed onto different output devices. So the example of the output devices are either it can be a indicator. LCD okay display or it can be speakers or it can be release okay so this is your main structure of your microcontroller okay so what what will be present in your cpu cpu mainly consists of your arithmetic and logic unit and the control unit okay then the memory can be uh, your uh, it consists of two types of memory program memory or data memory right so what is program memory it is your ROM and data memory is your random access memory sometimes it is also called as read write memory so the sensor will sense the data and it will be giving on to your input port so based on the input and the output because the uh, microcontroller um, takes the digital inputs right so in the uh, input side you can have an analog to digital converter similarly in the output side you can have a digital to analog converter so based on the both the analog input uh, given to the uh, input port you have again two uh, structure that is called as your analog input to microcontroller well, let me write this music this is analog output from microcontroller so based on this you have two different structure across the input as well as the output side so across the input side if, it, if the sensor is giving you the analog input what uh, what what will be the next stage the analog has to be converted into your digital right so you are you are having an analog to digital converter which will be giving uh, given to the input port okay so this is going to be your input port will be given to your CPU output port and you will be getting the corresponding output 1 2 3 4 5 6 ok output signal lines Now what will be your uh, structure of your output if you want to get uh, uh, the after processing if you want to get the output as analog signal similarly in the output you will be getting uh, you will be using a digital to analog converter which converts the digital uh, output of the microcontroller to analog okay so how will be your structure the input signals will be given to your input port. So this will be your input signal, input port, CPU, across the output you will be giving it to a digital to analog converter. 
DAC and you will be getting the analog output. Okay. Control program. So this will be your input and output circuit. Okay. So can you give me some of the example of microcontroller, whatever electronic components, wherever you want a controlling of something, day-to-day -day life, uh, whatever you use in your house, such as your washing machine, oven, or a humidifier, or your uh, automobile vehicles. Okay, all consist of your uh, controlling or a microcontroller device which controls the value to a constant value with your uh, closed-loop technology. Okay. So the next topic is your half adder okay so the half adder half adder okay so what is meant by half adder so half adder is a circuit that adds two binary variables okay but it does not accept a carry it does not Accept a carry from other circuit, okay? Which accepts the carry will be your full adder, okay? So it adds two binary variables. So, uh, so what will be the combination two power two? Totally, there will be four combinations, okay? <coughs> so what will be your truth table? Uh, truth table of your half adder A, B. You will be having a sum. And next one will be your carry. S stands for sum and C stands for your carry. Okay. This will be your sum. So what will be your combination 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. So you know the addition, right? Binary addition. 0 plus 0, 0, 0 plus 1, 1, 1 plus 1, which will be equal to 2. Binary equivalent is 1, 0, 1 plus 1 plus 1, which will be equal to 3. Binary equivalent is 11. Okay. So 0 plus 0, what will be your sum? Sum will be equal to 0. Carry will also be equal to 0. 0 plus 1, what will be your sum? Sum will be 1. Carry will be equal to 0. 1 plus 0, sum will be 1. Carry will be equal to 0. 1 plus 1, you have 1, 0, right? So your LSB will be your sum and your MSB will be your carry. Okay? So 0 will be your sum and 1 will be your carry. Okay, now sum can be given by the expression. What is your expression for your sum? Sum is equal to wherever you have sum is equal to 1. You have to take the input next to it. Okay, so I can tell that A is 0, B is 1. So A bar B. So a sum is equal to A bar B plus see here A B bar. A B bar. Okay. What will be your carry? Carry is equal to you have only 1, 1 where you have A, B. Okay. So you are not going for any kind of map, map here. You are going to directly simplify it. So sum is equal to A bar B plus A, B bar. So what is this expression? You have seen this expression somewhere, right? Yes, it is the expression for your output of your XOR gate. Y is equal to A, X or B. What did you get? 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. So, whenever the input is same, you had the output to be 0. Whenever you have the different inputs, you had the output to be 1. So, expression for XOR gate was equal to A bar B plus A B bar. Okay, XOR gate. So, now can we uh, draw the diagram? So, if a simple block diagram, if this is your half adder, you have two inputs A, B, so your output will be two outputs. One is your sum and the other is your carry. Sum will be equal to A X or B and carry will be equal to A B. Okay. Now can we uh, draw the diagram using your uh, gates. So uh, sum you have to draw for sum and uh, carry right. So sum is equal to A X or B. You can replace this by an X or gate. A into B carry. You can replace it by an AND gate. Okay. So you have to inputs a b so if i connect it to an xor gate you can get your sum so sum s is equal to a bar b plus a 
b bar or it is a x a x or b okay now what will be your carry how will you take your carry a into b you connect it to an and gate so carry is equal to a dot b a into b so this will be your half adder okay formed by using an xor gate and your and gate now the next topic is your full adder so what is meant by full adder so full adder also adds to binary variables but in this case it adds to binary variables but it also accepts the carry accepts the carry from previous circuit okay so the total number of inputs is going to be it has three inputs and two outputs okay now full adder if i take full adder it has three inputs inputs are a b c in which is the input from the or carry from previous lsb okay and here you will be having sum and carry so the sum is usually given by the expression a x or b x or c we will find uh, this expression how you are getting it c is given by uh, two expressions okay c is e equal to a b plus c in into a x or b this is one formula or i can write this as c out is okay or c out is equal to it is given by another formula a b plus b c i plus a c i or c i into a so it is i is c in okay so now this full adder the speciality of this full adder is full adder can be formed using two half adders two half adders so we will proceed with what is given in your text okay both the ways so first let us see the truth table of the full adder so since it has three input bits right so three inputs what is going to be your truth table so if i take a b c in it has three inputs and two outputs so what will be your combination 2 power 3 you have eight combination sum and it will be your carry out okay 0000010010101101001011011 so you have totally seven combinations okay sorry 0 to 7 that is total eight combinations now you have to find the sum so the same addition okay 0 plus 0 so this is your addition so what will be your value 0 plus 0 plus 0 sum is equal to 0 carry is equal to 0 0 plus 0 is 0 0 plus 1 is your sum is equal to 1 carry is equal to 0 0 plus 1 is 1 1 plus 0 is again 1 so sum is equal to 1 carry is equal to 0 0 plus 1 is 1 One plus one is one zero. So zero will be your sum. One will be your carry. One plus zero is one. One plus zero is again one. So sum is equal to one. Carry is equal to zero. Here you have one plus zero is equal to one. Then one plus one it is equal to one zero. So sum will be equal to zero. Carry will be equal to one. One plus one is one zero. One zero plus zero is again one zero. So zero will be your sum. Carry will be equal to one. So one plus one plus uh, one is nothing but one one, right? So your sum is also equal to one. Carry is also equal to one. So this is your truth table. What you have got now from this can we find out what is the value for sum? Can we simplify your sum value? What is your sum? You have to get it as A X or B X or C. How we are getting it? Let us see. Okay. 
So now, where are the uh, positions where you have 1? Here, here, right? So this is 1. Let me simplify it directly. Here, 1, 0, 0. And here, last one, 1, 1, 1. So sum is equal to, if I write the expression A bar, B bar, C in. A bar, B bar, C in plus A bar, B, C in bar, right, plus A, B bar, C in bar, plus A, B, C. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, okay. Now from this can we take A bar as common, A bar if I take it as common, what will you get B bar, C in, plus B, C in bar, okay. Plus, can we take A as common here? A. So, B bar, C in bar, plus B, C. Okay. So, what will you get C here? Here it is in the form of B bar, C in, plus B, C in bar. Is it in the form of XOR gate? Okay. So, if we had to, what was your XOR gate? See here. Y is equal to A bar B plus A B bar. If A is equal to B bar and sorry uh, A is equal to C in and B is equal to B bar then what, what is the same form? Okay you have. So Y is equal to A bar B plus A B bar. So your A and B is what? B and C in this case. So what you will be getting? I can write it as A bar. Okay. So here it is A X or B. So, similarly, what will be your value? B, X or C in. Okay. Plus, see here, your uh, value is B bar, C in bar plus B, C. You have another gate which is called as opposite of your X or that is your, called as your X nor gate. Okay. So, you know that X or gate is given by A, B, Y is equal to A, X or B. Okay, so 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. What did you get here? When both the inputs is same, you had 0. When you had 1 inputs, you had 1 input is high, you had the output to be high. This was equal to your XOR gate. Okay, the opposite of this is called as XNOR gate. Okay, so what will be your truth table for your XNOR gate? A, B, Y is equal to A, X nor B. This is your symbol. Okay. Or I can write it write it as A X or B the whole bar. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. So in this case what will be your output? When both are same you will be getting high. When both are different you will be getting it low. Now see your expression wherever you have 1 it is A bar B bar plus A B. So your Y is equal to A bar B bar plus A B. See this whether this expression is matching with this expression B bar C in bar plus B C. So I can write it as A into B X nor C in or you can put I can write it clearly B X or C in plus A into B X nor C in that is X or the whole bar. Okay. Now now you have got A into B X or C in plus A into B X or C in the whole bar. It is also looking in the fraction A, A bar B plus A B bar, right? So ultimately what can I write? A X or B X or C in. So this is how I have got the expression. Take here it is, what is this reason? Because it is, uh, it is looking like A bar B. Since it is looking like A bar B plus A, B bar. Same it is looking like XOR gate. Okay. Instead of A, B, C, it is A, B, C, A. That is the only difference. So we have got your sum. Now you have to solve for carry. Now what is your value for carry? Carry is equal to, what is your value? Wherever you have 1, 2, 3, 4. So what are the, here uh, you have 1, 1, and the last one. Okay. So let me take the combination. Now first combination is A bar B C in plus 
second one a b bar c in a b bar c in okay plus third combination a b c in bar plus fourth combination again it is same a b c okay now can i take c in as common if i take c in as common a bar b plus a b bar plus what here it is c in right so if i take here a b as common right so you can take c in bar plus c in okay so c in into here it is a bar b plus a b bar so it will be a x or b plus a b because uh, c in in c in plus c in bar is always equal to 1 okay so this is your one of your carry expression see here this is your one of your carry out expression c c out right c out it is matching a b plus c in into a x or b okay so one more expression is widely used through which you are going to draw a diagram which is given in your text okay so these two expressions are required for forming a full ladder using two half adder okay so the two different types are given in your text so first let us proceed with uh, drawing full adder using two half adder okay so if i take a half adder here see here a plus b a x or b is your expression of your half adder here okay so if i xor it with your c in i can get your sum of your full adder right that is one case second one it is c in a x or b plus a b so here you have already you have in your half adder a b i want c in into a x or b okay so let us form the two half adder so if this is your half adder and this is your second half adder so the input to your first half adder is what is the input a and b now what is your output of your uh, half adder s is equal to a x or b and carry is equal to a b so this is your first half adder okay now here i am drawing your second half adder so now if i give this input to the second half adder now here you will be getting a x or b right okay now what will be your um, this will be your next uh, input that is your c in okay now when you gave input as a b your output was a x or b now when you give input of the uh, half adder as a x or b and c in what will be the output output sum will be equal to a x or b x or c in okay right now you have got your half adder now what is the next um, uh, output you want you want c out now c out is equal to you have already got c out of your first half adder as a b now you want the second output c out you have to add one c in into a x or b right so if i add a, a or gate if i add a or gate here so one of the input to the or gate will be your a b okay and what will be the other input other input here what will be your c out see here if uh, when a and b was the input your output c is equal to a b similarly if a plus b a x or b and c in is your input what will be your c out here it will be equal to a x or b into c in okay multiplication of both so if i give this as your input to this or gate what is your output you are getting you will be getting the output is equal to a x or b into c in plus a b okay you will be getting so the half uh, the full adder can be formed by using two half adder plus an or gate okay so this is your structure of your half adder okay now i am going to replace it by your gates instead of this half adder i am going to give the diagram of your half adder using your gates okay that will be your final structure using two half adder so full adder using two
half add up and an or gate so how will you get now replace this two half add up by means of your half add up circuit that's all by this circuit okay then you will be getting your half add up so what was your first uh, two input to your half adder so your half adder consisted of your xor gate and your ant gate right so what was your input a b sum was is equal to a xor b so here the input was a b so your output c out will be equal to a into b so this was your structure of your first half adder let me take this as half adder 1 okay half adder 1 now the same structure i am going to draw here xor gate along with one and gate okay now this will be your a xor b xor c in why what is the reason now one input will come directly towards this input of your xor gate and what will be your next input next input is going to be your c in okay c in so the output will be a xor b here you will be getting a xor b xor c in okay now what will be your uh, output of your and gate and gate will be equal to a xor b right into c in so c out will be equal to a xor b into your c in now if i add to this your ab using an or gate now c out overall c out is equal to c in into a xor b plus ab okay so this is going to be your second half adder half adder 2 this is half adder 1 okay so by using two half adder half adder 1 plus half adder 2 plus 1 or gate z equal to full adder okay this is by using two half adder the second full adder is by using the second expression okay of your carry that is c out is equal to ab plus bc in plus c in into a okay and some the same expression so the second full adder so what is the expression s is equal to a xor b xor c and c out is equal to so what is your expression ab plus b into c in plus c in into a by using these two expression i like i'll explain how you are going to get this expression from your first expression that is also possible okay so how will you draw the uh, full adder okay if you take the three inputs a b c in so first let us uh, finish your uh, sum so if i take this three inputs to an uh, xor gate you will be getting the sum directly right s is equal to a xor b xor c in okay now what is the next uh, gates you have to give here it is multiplication of three right three and gates together join together to an or gate will give you this expression so what is your first and gate ab so i have to take a b given to one and gate so your value here is ab similarly next one is b into c in so next is b and c in okay so here it will be b into c in next one is c in into a a and c in okay so what will be here it is okay 
a into c n. So if I connect these three to an OR gate because it is c out is equal to a b plus b into c in plus a into c in. So this is another form of your full adder. Okay. Now the question can be how did you get this c out expression? We can find out or we can find this uh, expression using this previous expression. Okay. Let us derive. So c out is equal to what is the expression a b plus c in into a x or b. So this was your first output right. So from this you are going to derive it in another form. Okay. So let, let me cross multiply it a b plus c in into a. No uh, before that you have to write a x or b right. So it will be a bar b plus a b bar. Okay, so now which is equal to a b plus c in into a bar b plus c in into a b bar. Okay, so from the first and the third term if I take a as common then you will be getting if I take a as common b plus b bar c in. Okay, plus a bar c in b. You can write it in other way also. Okay. Now this is your expression which you have got. Now there is a law which is called as distribution or distributive law. Okay. So under this distributive law it is given as a plus a bar b is equal to a plus b. Okay. a plus a bar b is equal to a plus b. So what will be your uh, value here? See here also it is looking like b plus b bar c in right. So what will, what will be your formula? It will be equal to b plus c in okay plus a bar c in b okay. So now you cross multiply inside a b plus a c in plus a bar c in b. Similarly, now if I take C in as common here, C in, then you will be getting A plus A bar B. Again, by means of distributive law, what you will be getting? A B plus C in into A plus B. So, what is your formula? A B plus A C in plus B C in. So, your C out is equal to A B plus A C in plus B C in. Is it matching with your formula a b plus b c in plus a c n. So these two are same. So this is just for your understanding. No need to study it. So you have to draw only your diagram using two half adder and your or gate. If it is asked or you can follow this diagram using the second formula. Okay. By this your second and third section of your second module is done. Okay.